Hello everybody, um, my name's Keith Holland, I'm an optometrist based in Cheltenham and for the last 30 years I've worked with children with learning difficulties, dyslexia, dyspraxia and a range of other learning disorders. And this very brief introduction is just to tell you a little bit about the vision problems that can affect learning. So, so I've entitled the talk, What's All This Fuss About Anyway? So what's all this visual issue about? Well, we take it for granted that children can see easily and we do very little to really look into this further. Most people indeed do learn to see well and easily and use their visual system efficiently to learn, but some don't. And the problem is, it's hard to see when there is a problem. So we think, do children get their eyes tested in the UK? And the answer to that is no. There is no national screening system for eyes in the UK anymore. There used to be, but it's been out of, the, it's been disbanded now for about 20 years. And even when eyes are tested on a screening basis, the vision problems that can affect learning are often not looked at. So what are those skills that we need for learning? Can you see properly for reading and writing? Do your eyes work together? And do they work together effortlessly, without hurting? So what's it like when something goes wrong? Here we have a picture of the outside of my practice and with as it would be seen by somebody with completely normal vision. And here we have it, seen by somebody who is slightly short-sighted and can't see too clearly. And you can still see perfectly well what's there. Slightly blurred vision at distance is not too big an issue for learning. It can cause problems with sport and maybe with confidence in playing games, but it's not really an issue so far as reading and writing is concerned. If a child is long-sighted, that may well cause them problems of fatigue and irritability without affecting their ability to see clearly at far. So most standard tests of distance vision are not related to the issues with reading and writing. Blurred vision at near though is much more serious. Typically a young child will become very reluctant to engage in reading and writing ta tasks at near. They'll lose concentration, uh, they may be verbally fine, they may be able to talk well and answer questions verbally very well, but not really engage in reading and writing. And typically, they will not be asked to spend long periods engaged in reading and writing till they're about eight or nine, and so issues may not show up particularly well at an early stage. When writing, they may use shorter sentences and simpler language in order to minimise what's being asked of them. So here we have a picture of a piece of text which is perfectly clear and easy to see. But what I've done here is apply the same amount of blurring to this text as we saw on the distance picture earlier. And as you can see, this becomes much, much harder to make sense of than the distance picture of the front of the building. So even a small amount of blurred vision at near, or transient blurred vision which is coming and going, is going to have a much bigger impact on reading and writing skills than distance blurred vision. And this is not normally looked at in routine eye tests. Just remember, children cannot borrow your eyes to see how you see. And it's amazing how often children will sit in a consulting room and when you show them something going fuzzy, they say, that happens all the time. And their parents go, but you never told me. And they go, but mummy, you never asked me. We have two eyes, don't forget that, and they have to work together and they have to work together on a sustained, accurate basis if we're going to engage in reading and writing. So what can go wrong with that? Problems with what we call convergence, or the t teaming of the two eyes, are associated with about one third of all problems with reading and writing. And dealing with them will often increase reading levels very significantly, and often in a short space of time. So here we have a piece of normal text that's clear and easy to see when both eyes are teamed up together. Now just imagine what would happen if this text breaks down because the two eyes are not looking at quite the same place. Then this is what you will see. The text seems to swim, to wobble and to dance about. Some children describe this as fuzziness, some as blurring, some as swimming. All of them will avoid looking at it. So what, a child, what does the child say? when the two eyes are not working together. Firstly, probably nothing. 
they'll assume that they're seeing the way you or I see, and therefore they must be stupid or thick in order not to be able to understand it. But if they do say anything, they'll report swimming, wobbling, fuzzy text, smudgy text, or use language like that. Children under the age of seven will rarely report symptoms, I find. It's usually the older children who become aware that this is perhaps not normal and are able to, to verbalise it. The young children will just struggle. In the classroom, issues with convergence will cause fatigue, eye strain, very often cause headaches, typically across the front, across the brow area here. You will often find the child takes abnormal postures. They will tilt over to one side when they're working, so that effectively they can switch off using one eye and rely on the other eye. Um, and they will associate reading with discomfort. And you will find a significant percentage of children, often boys, simply just say, I don't do reading, I just back off. Now, we talked so far about focusing and convergence, but the eyes have to scan and track around the page of text and move as we're reading. And they have to do that in a controlled way. And we use what is called the saccadic eye movement system for this, which is the eyes moving in a series of small jumps along the page, uh, going from word to word or syllable to syllable, or even jumping over several words at a time if a child has good word recognition skills. When that breaks down, the child is likely to lose their place and lose their line and become confused and their comprehension drops. The next, next slide is going to show two passages with a highlighted box representing how a child moves through the text and we are able to measure this in practice with sophisticated um, infrared technology and you'll be seeing uh, two children, here we are, reading through the same passage, they're the same age. The child on the left um, has dyslexic issues, the child on the right is a normal good reader. And as you can see, they're going through the passage of pace, whilst the child on the left is still only part way through. And uh, the child on the right's already left the classroom, gone down to lunch and had their lunch before the first child's finished reading. There we are. And we'll stop there because he's going to be ages finishing off. But you can see he's going backwards and forwards, rereading, becoming confused, and with lowered comprehension. What about handwriting? Vision problems can affect writing too, um, making the task more stressful and uncomfortable and affecting posture and again leading to a reluctance to write. So here is a piece of writing of a child seen in the practice and here's the same child writing a week later having had visual help and as you can see there's a great increase in the quantity of writing and in the quality of writing. Often when there are convergence and focus problems, the hand-eye coordination system breaks down and causes the writing to deteriorate, as you can see here. And what about maths? Surely maths is an individual task, but it is. In many respects, maths is a shorthand for visual descriptions of space, time, volume, length, height, breadth, etc. And so a child with a visual problem may well not have good visualisation and the ability to think in those spatial terms needed for maths. They may be able to number crunch and learn to do a rote task with numbers but with little understanding of what they're doing. But graphical work and geometry and trigonometry may cause them real difficulties. So, what can we do to help? The first thing is to identify the child with problems and as a parent there are a range of checklists available which you can fill in and complete and score your child to see if there's a likelihood of there being a vision problem. Having identified that, you then need to seek specialist help. As I've said earlier in this talk, a routine eye test through the NHS is not likely to pick up some of the more subtle visual issues and you do need to seek out a specialist uh, assessment with an optometrist who has a specialist interest in this field. Um, the British Association of Behavioural Optometrists in the UK maintain a register of optometrists qualified in this field and they can be contacted at www.babo.co.uk. Similarly, 
in the United States and Europe, the College of Optometrists in Vision Development maintain a similar register at covd.org. Uh, there's also a great deal more information on this subject available on our practice website at keithholland.co.uk. So I hope in this very brief talk I've been able to just alert you to some of the simpler issues of vision which can affect learning. Um, there is a lot more there, but that's for another talk.